Hello, this is Anthony with BBSN, and we are back with uh, one of our little side projects, the Satchel Page Traveling All-Star Team, and been a little bit since we've uh, played one of these, since we've uh, been busy with Red, White, and Blue Racing, uh, Fergie Jenkins, and also some Glory Days Boxing, so wanted to get back to this and finish up the first series, and just to catch you up, uh, the Satchel Page traveling all-star team is made up of Negro League players who uh, played mo all of or predominantly most of their careers in the Negro Leagues and are members of the Hall of Fame. And this is a barnstorming tour where they basically are going to play 25 games against other teams made up of Hall of Fame all-stars. And this is the first series. This is game number five against the Cooperstown Misfits. And Cooperstown Misfits are a team that are basically made up of Hall of Famers who did not make it on one of the other four All-Star teams. And as you will see, there are still some very, very good players, uh, particularly in the outfield on this team. And thus far, this uh, actually will be the rubber match of this opening five-game set as both teams have won four or two games, sorry, of the four played. So we will get right to the starting lineups in this one. And first off for Satchel Page's Ebony Elites. Leading off, uh, one of the fastest men in baseball, Cool Papa Bell. And the uh, urban legend on him was he could turn off a light and be in bed before it got dark. Slick fielding and heavy hitting Willie Wells bat second at short. Oscar Charleston will be in center field. Josh Gibson, uh, probably the premier power hitter and really one of the greatest players ever to play the game. Uh, never did get a chance to play in integrated baseball, unfortunately. He will bat cleanup. And Turkey Stearns, he will actually be our feature player of the Satchel Page All-Star team tonight. He'll be in left. Deacon White at the hot corner. Biz Mackey will be the designated hitter. Uh, because he's just not that many reps for him as uh, Josh Gibson's backup behind the plate. Buck Leonard will be at first base, and Ray Dandridge will be at second. On the mound for the Ebony Elites will be Hilton Smith, and Hilton Smith arguably may be their best pitcher even. He's uh, fifth in the rotation just because of some other names on the staff, but as you will see, he is uh, very capable himself. Uh, for the Cooperstown Misfits, leading off a uh, switch at the top of the order, Frankie Frisch, the Fordham Flash, bats uh, first and will be at second base. Chris Speaker drops to second and he'll be in his familiar center field. And the uh, Gray Eagle, or Spoke as he was called, played probably one of the shallowest center fields in the history of the game. Uh, went back on the ball very well, obviously. And... Uh, Played shallow, he even had a couple of assists at first base during his career. So batting third for the Misfits, uh, Al Simmons, left fielder. Hank Greenberg, the power hitting first baseman, is cleanup. Harry Heelman, a Detroit Tiger slugger, bats fifth in right field. And Johnny Mize steps in for Mickey Mantle at the designated hitter position tonight. Roy Campanella will be behind the plate. George Kell at third. And Old Aches and Pains, Luke Appling at shortstop rounds out the batting order. On the mound for the Cooperstown Misfits will be Ironman Joe McGinnity. Uh, pitched more doubleheaders than any pitcher in baseball history. Uh, and was one of the uh, four uh, mainstays of the early Giants staff, along, of course, with Christy Mathewson. And uh, oh, and we're playing in uh, this game will be in Fenway Park, modern Fenway Park. So ballpark adjustments, uh, right and left singles are both 19, and ballpark home runs nine for right-handers and only one for left-handers. So with that, we are ready to go. And uh, as mentioned, Turkey Stearns is our uh, feature player today. So we'll have. Uh, some tidbits uh, about him between innings as we go through the game. So getting ready to lead it off is Cool Papa Bell and McGinnity set to deliver. And 6 and 11 and Bell a switch hitter. So that will be against the left hander and that will be a ground ball down to Frisch one down. And 
and that brings up shortstop Willie Wells. And 4 and 11, and Wells, a right hander. That's going to be a fly ball X to left field, and in left field is Al Simmons. He is a 1. And he's going to get to that, and Simmons' rating is a 4. So 4 and a 10. And Simmons gets to that, makes a play, two down. And that is going to bring up Oscar Charleston. And Oscar, the center fielder. And two and a six against the right-hander, and that is going to be a walk. So Charleston, a threat to go. And McGinnity, not very proficient at holding runners on. A steal adjustment of minus one for Charleston. And Charleston, he is a 15. So if he gets a jump, he's going to try and go here. So two to six or 11, and he's going to try and steal and does not get a jump, so he'll stay put for Josh Gibson. And three and a six to Josh against the right-hander, and that is going to be a split chance single over a line out. And hit sharply down to third base, and Kell makes a nice stab of that, and the inning is over. So no hits, no runs, no errors, and one left. We head to the bottom of the first with no score. And our feature player, Turkey Stearns, will lead off the next inning. As Hilton Smith set to face the uh, Cooperstown Misfits, Frankie Frisch. And against the right-hander, one and seven. And that's going to be a single for Frisch. So he starts things off with a base hit back up the middle. And Frankie. Uh, a minus five steal adjustment. Frisch is an 18. So that would be a 13. Uh, he's going to give it a shot if he can get a jump here. And 12, he cannot get a jump. So he will definitely stay put as Tris Speaker steps in. And nothing on the one die 20 there. One and a five spoke against the right hander and that's going to be triple over a double. And 13 will be a double and Frisch, he is going to hold up at third base with no outs. So two quick hits for the Cooperstown Misfits. That brings up Al Simmons. And not on the 1D20. Simmons, 1 and a 10. And that's going to be a ground ball down to third base. And on that, uh, runners are going to hold. So 5-3 on the put out there as the infield was back. And that brings up the cleanup hitter, Hank Greenberg. And nothing doing on the one die 20. Smith to Greenberg, 6 and 11 against the right hander, and that is a fly ball to right field and X rating and out in right field. Cool Papa Bell, he has a range of 1 and an error of 10. And he's going to get to that uh, 10 and a 10. And he is going to make the play. So on that, uh, I got to get rid of the uh, the stratomatic rust here. So right field, and that is going to score the runner from third base. So Frisch comes in to score a sacrifice fly for Greenberg. And the Cooperstown Misfits take an early 1-0 lead. Runner on second base. Two outs now for Harry Hillman. And Hillman, 2 and a 10 against the righty. And that's going to be a walk. So runners on first and second now for Big Johnny Mize, the big cat. And a DH for Mickey Mantle today. 
and two and a six, and my single runners advance two, so coming in to score is Tris Speaker, and over to third goes Harry Hillman and the Cooperstown Misfits out to a quick 2-0 lead in this one. And that brings up catcher Roy Campy Campanella behind the plate, and three and a seven, and Campy, He's going to draw a walk, and the sacks are loaded, so early trouble here for Hilton Smith, who I uh, jinxed because I talked him up prior to the game, as that brings up George Hill, or Kel, sorry, two outs, bases loaded, and Kel, six and an eight against the right-hander, and that's going to be a fly ball to center field, and Oscar Charleston's going to run that down and get out of the inning. But the Cooperstown Misfits come up with a couple of runs on three hits, leave the bases juiced, and we head to the second inning. Our score is 2-0. And Turkey Stearns will lead things off for the Ebony Elites here in the top of the second. And Stearns, his real name was actually Norman Thomas Stearns. He was given the nickname Turkey, uh, a couple of different stories on that. It was said he had that nickname due to the fact that he uh, ran in an extremely interesting fashion. And that's going to be a ground ball down to first base and Greenberg a range of four. And Greenberg. And that is going to be a single and Greenberg is also a ten. So roll a 10 on an error of 10. And no error, that will just be a single for Turkey Stearns. So Stearns on to lead off the second. And the two versions are, was he uh, had a very unorthodox running style. His arms uh, were said to flap wildly as he ran. And that was one version, and a version given by his teammates. And But Turkey Stearns himself said he was given the nickname as a child uh, due to the fact that he had a uh, pot belly. So those are the two versions out there. I would probably tend to believe Turkey Stearns since he uh, commented directly on that. Two and a nine to Deacon White against Joe McGinnity. And that is going to be a ground ball down to second base, and that's going to move the runner along. So Stearns is on at second base, one down, and that will bring up not Buck Leonard, but Biz Mackey. And Mackey uh, played his first game in game four of this series and actually had a very, very good game, which got him a spot in the lineup tonight. And one and a seven against the right-hander is going to be a fly ball to center field. Runners will hold two down. And that brings up first baseman Buck Leonard, the number eight hitter. And one and a seven for Leonard. Leonard's going to draw the walk. So runners on first and second now, two down. And McGinnity, in a little bit of a jam himself, would like to get out of this and not go back to the top of the order. As second baseman Ray Dandridge steps in, and that is going to be a potential wild pitch. And McGinnity, he is a one, so he's going to be good there. And Dandridge, four and a three against the right-hander, and that is going to be a ballpark single chance. And again in Fenway, one to 19, and that is a single. So Stearns, he's going to try and come around to score. And in left field, Al Simmons, an arm of minus three, uh, plus two for two outs. So it will be a net result of 15 for Stearns. Here he comes. Here comes the throw to the plate, and he is in there easily. And the Ebony Elites are on the board. And over to third goes Buck Leonard, run scoring single for Ray Dandridge, and it is two to one. And we go back to the top of the order, Cool Papa Bell. And Bell grounded out to second his first time up. Comes a pitch from McGinnity and four and a 12. Will be a single back up the middle to center field. So coming into score is Leonard and we are all tied up. 
and Dandridge, he's going to run on Speaker, who has a minus one. So this will be one to 16 with the adjustment for two outs. Standard's going to third, and he is in there as well. So runner's still at the corners. And two down. And Willie Wells will step up, and we are tied. McGinnity the pitch, and five and a seven to the right-hander, and that is going to be a double over a fly out. And nice running play out in center field by Chris Speaker. Again, playing shallow. He races back into the gap, pulls that one in, and the inning is over. But the Ebony Elites, they pick up two runs on three hits of their own, leave a couple. And we are heading to the bottom of the second inning, and it is tied up at two apiece. And I always put somebody upside down. All right, so Luke Applin, the ninth place hitter for the Misfit, steps in to face Hilton Smith. Five and a seven against the right hander is going to be a strikeout, first of the game. So Applin heads back to the dugout, ejected head down. So Turkey Stearns, he played uh, 20 seasons in the Negro Leagues uh, for various teams as Frankie first steps up and comes a pitch. And against the left-hander, and that is going to be a ground ball down to second base, and Frisch is taken care of by his counterpart Ray Dandridge, two down. And in that time, uh, the stats, of course, for the Negro Leagues are very uh, sketchy and, and incomplete. Uh, by best estimates, he played roughly in 750 games and hit a 176 home runs over that time. As two and an eight to Tris Speaker. And Speaker against the right-hander, that's going to be another ground ball down to Dandridge. And three up, three down for Hilton Smith in the second. And we head to the third, tied at two. So if you equate that to a, uh, let's just say he averaged, uh, if he had played in the majors, if he averaged just 130 games a season over 20 years, which uh, a player of his caliber, he was a five-tool player for sure, had a great speed, power, uh, very good defensively hit for average as Oscar Charleston steps in. And 5-11 and for McGinnity against the left-hander, and that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. One down, Frisch takes care of that. So, you know, very conceivable he would have averaged if he had stayed healthy and played in the majors at least that many games. So if you equate that uh, one and a nine for Gibson, and that is going to be a ground ball down to shortstop and Luke Appling. Rifles out over to Greenberg, two down, and our subject is now up with two outs. So that would really average uh, to, or come out to roughly uh, 619 home runs over a 20-year career if he had averaged 130 games a season. Uh, definitely very worthy Hall of Fame numbers, and of course he is in the Hall of Fame, but that averages uh, roughly 31 home runs a year. So that puts him up uh, with obviously some of the elite sluggers in the history of the game and again you add the fact that he was a five tool player with uh with speed you know similar to uh, a rod early in his career so a uh, a very prodigious career and again like many of these players unfortunately he never had the chance to uh, prove himself in the major leagues so stearns two and a seven against the right hander and that is going to be a triple over a double so he's going to come through after getting that talk up with a double, two outs, runner on second base, and that is Stern's second hit of the game. And he also scored the first run for the Elites as Deacon White steps up. And McGinnity. And that's going to be a single, and coming in to score his second run of the game is Turkey Stearns. RBI single by Deacon White and Satchel Page's team leads it three to two. And Deacon White, he's going to try and steal. This will be uh, 
1 to 17, and he is safe if he can get a jump. And unfortunately, he needs to get a 7 to get a jump. He doesn't get it. Uh, 11 otherwise, actually 10 otherwise, so he's going to stay put. As Biz Mackey steps in, and Mackey comes a pitch from McGinnity. And that is going to be a walk, so runners on first and second now. And McGinnity is struggling, and up in the bullpen already is Lefty Gomez for the Cooperstown Misfits as Buck Leonard steps up to the plate. And no, nothing on the uh, one die 20, two and a seven. And Leonard, that is going to be a fly ball to center field. Speaker camps under that, and the inning is over. But the Elites, a couple more hits and another run. We head to the bottom of the third inning. It is three to two. Elites over the Misfits. And Al Simmons set to lead it off against Hilton Smith in the third. And Simmons, that's going to be a double over a single. And Simmons is going to get a double, drives that into the gap, and he's in second base standing up. And Simmons, they called him Bucket Foot, and he is also Lead Foot. He's going to stay right there as Hank Greenberg steps in. And Greenberg against the right hand. That's going to be a fly ball to center field, and... Charleston runs that down, back to second base, goes Simmons, one away for Harry Hillman. And Hillman, that is a double over single as well. So a little rally here, and the Misfits are going to tie this as Hillman doubles in Simmons, and it is now 3-3. Three to three. And it looks like we are headed for an offensive uh, outburst here as we are only in the bottom of the third inning. And Johnny Mai steps up to the plate, and the slugger singled and drove in a run his first time up. So Mize, here comes a pitch, and struck him out. Hilton Smith with a big K there of the big cat, and two down, runner at second base still. And that brings up Roy Campanella. And Campy, here comes a pitch. And that's going to be a ground ball down to shortstop, and that takes care of the inning. But the Misfits fight back a couple of doubles. And they leave one, get a run in, and we go to the fourth inning tied at three. And Ray Dandridge will lead it off against the Iron Man here in the fourth. And Dandridge, and that is going to be a single into left field. So the hit parade continues, and that is Dandridge's second hit of the day. He also drove in a run back in the second inning. We go to the top of the order. And Dandridge, he's going to try and get a jump here. And this team can run. Seven, he's got the jump, so this will be a safe on a roll of 1-14. to 14. Campanella will throw down to second base, and Frisch puts down the tag, and Dandridge is nailed. So Roy Campanella puts that nonsense to bed. One down for Cool Papa Bell. And Bell... It's going to be a walk, second time he's been on base, he's singled back in the second. And Bell, he's going to try and get a jump two, and he needs a four to six, not going to happen. Uh, would be one to twelve to steal with a bad jump, he's going to stay put, Willie Wells up. And Willie Wells, three and five, that is a split home run. Home run over a double. He rips this one, and it is off the top of the wall. Or my bad. That is gone. One to nine. Never mind. So off the top of the wall, it bounces over a two-run shot for Willie Wells, and it is now five to three. As Cool Papa Bell jogs across home plate, Willie Wells behind him with a two-run blast. 
and Lefty Gomez is still loosening up down in the pen, and this may be McGinnity's last inning here if he doesn't get out of this. Still only one down. And against the left-hander, that is going to be a potential home run. And Charleston drives that deep into right field and going back, 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 back. And making the catch of the track is Hillman. Two down. As Josh Gibson steps up. And Gibson, he is 0 for 2. He's hit the ball hard his first time up, but a nice play by Kell. And 5 and a 5, that's going to be a fly ball to center field. And Speaker's under that comfortably. So two more runs come across for the Elites on two hits and a walk. The big blow, a two-run shot by Willie Wells. And it is five to three going into the bottom of the fourth inning. And Turkey Stearns will lead off the fifth and we'll have some more uh, trivia on him as Hilton Smith set to face George Kell. And that's gonna be a fly ball to center field, one away. So Kell retired and aches and pains, Luke Applin, he struck out his first time up against Smith. And here comes a pitch, and that is going to be a fly ball to center field as well. Charleston runs that down. Two away, back to the top of the order for Frankie Frisch, and Frisch singled and scored back in the first, grounded out in the second. Hilton Smith with a pitch. And Frisch, the switch hitter, and that is going to be a single into left field. So Frankie on for the second time. And Frankie feeling his oats here. Two down, he's gonna try and get a jump. And seven, he does not, so he definitely will stay put. Kinda of risky to run on Gibson even when you do get a jump. As Tris Speaker, the Gray Eagle steps up. And here comes a pitch to Spoke, and that is a Ballpark home run chance, uh, but again, left-handers, it has to be a one. So Speaker, he gets into that, but he hits it right in that cavernous section in right center field, and that's going to be pulled in easily out there, making the play as cool Papa Bell. So a loud out, and we head to the top of the fifth, 5-3, the elites over the misfits. And Turkey Stearns is back up, and Stearns is two for two today. So another fun fact by for him, or about him, I should say. Now he, uh, Satchel Page actually uh, said he was as good a hitter as Josh Gibson, which is, um, you know, very high praise indeed. And, and Stearns was a very quiet man. He, uh, one of his teammates once said that about all he ever said was yes and no. Uh, so two and a ten, and that is a potential ballpark home run. So he hits a deep fly, but again, he needs a one, and that's going to die on the warning track. So one down. Uh, yeah, very quiet man, so he really didn't uh, attract a lot of the attention. He really basically spoke completely with his play on the field, but... Um, Died in 1979 and was elected to the Hall of Fame in 2000. So he didn't really get to, obviously didn't get to see that honor. But his wife, Nettie, who was a school teacher, and she actually lived uh, until 2014 and was very instrumental in campaigning for her husband. So she did get to see him inducted into the Baseball Hall of Fame, which uh, definitely amazing for her. And... You know, about that time, too, was um, during the 90s was when Buck O'Neill, really a great ambassador, just a great man. If you, if you want to really check out a an amazing, amazing person, just YouTube Buck O'Neill and listen to some of his interviews. He, uh, again, I've talked about him in previous videos, a man who had every reason to be very bitter, but uh, did nothing but spread joy and, and love for all people in the game of baseball. And you know, it recounted that he was very blessed that he just got the opportunity to play. And he was very instrumental in uh, the um, founding of the Negro Baseball Hall of Fame, Negro League Baseball Hall of Fame, 
which uh, brought a lot more attention to many of, this, of these players and again was probably also instrumental in helping uh, Turkey Stearns get inducted. So, Deacon White, as we are back to the game, steps in against McGinnity and this one is going to be a split single over a line out and he smokes that. It's right at Frankie Frisch though and Frisch pulls it in, two down. And that will bring up Biz Mackey, the backup catcher designated hitter tonight. And Mackey, he's going to get a chance for a home run there. I, I, uh, I'll bet a skinny one, so he smokes that. And that also is going to die at the warning track, so just another loud out. And three up, three down, which has been kind of a rarity. McGinnity did it in the first, but he has struggled since then. We head to the bottom of the fifth inning, 5-3. Ebony Elites over the Cooperstown, Cooperstown Misfits. And Al Simmons will lead things off in the bottom of the fifth inning for the Misfits. And that is going to be a ground ball down to shortstop. So at short, Willie Wells, range of two, and he is a 22. So 11, he's going to get to that, and 22 and a 15. And he's going to make the play. So a fine, actually I looked in the wrong column. Hold on, hold please. 22 and a 15 actually is going to be a one base error. So E6. And Simmons is aboard to lead things off in the fifth inning here. And that will bring up Hank Greenberg. So we will see if this comes back to Haunt Hilton Smith and the Elites. And Greenberg, he gets into that, and that ball is going to be driven into the outfield and into the gap. And 18, and Greenberg is going to settle for a double there, and Simmons, not a swift runner, he's going to hold up at third. So the tying runs are on second and third, both in scoring position. Nobody out, and that error could prove costly as Harry Hillman steps in. And here comes a pitch from Hilton Smith to Hillman, and 6 and a 10. That is going to be a ground ball X to shortstop. And at shortstop, Willie Wells, again, range of 22, and 22 on the air. He's going to get to that. 22 and a 7. And Wells, he is going to make the play. 16 on the range check is... Okay, runners will hold. So 6-3 on that put out. And nice play by Willie Wells. And that brings up Johnny Mize. One down, runners in scoring position on second, third. And here comes a pitch from Hilton Smith. And four and a five. That is a split chance home run. So Mize... He's going to get into this and he's going to get a run home regardless, hit deep to right field and that one is going to be caught, but that is enough to get a run home as jogging home comes Simmons with the unearned run. And sack fly nine for Johnny Mize and that cuts the deficit to five to four. Two outs for Roy Campanella and tying run on second base in the form of Hank Greenberg. Here comes a pitch to Campy. And Campy, that is a chance for a home run in right-handed batter, one to nine. He strokes this deep, deep into left field and just at the base of the green monster making the catch is Turkey Stearns. And we have had a few loud outs in this one. So a couple of hits, actually one hit. And one unearned run for the Misfits. They cut the lead to 5-4 heading into the sixth inning. And Buck Leonard set to face Joe McGinnity. And this will probably be Joe's last inning regardless. Uh, his point of weakness is the ninth, but he just isn't pitching very well today. So against Buck Leonard, and that's going to be a ballpark single. And again, 1-19, both lefty and righty. And Leonard's going to drive that into the outfield. So he's on at first base, and he's going to stay put. As Dandridge, who is two for two thus far, steps in. And here comes a pitch to Dandridge. 
And that is going to be a sharp line drive right at Frankie Frisch, who makes a nice play. Back to first is Leonard, and we head to the top of the order. One down, runner on first base. McGinnity to cool Papa Bell, and Bell and pops actually ballpark single. So it would have been a pop out, but it's going to be a single instead. And into right field, and in right field, an arm of plus one for Heelman. So Turkey Stir or Buck Leonard is a 13. He's not going to chance it. He's going to hold up at second base with the heart of the order coming up for the elites. And Willie Wells, he blasted a two-run home run his last time up. And five and an eight, McGinnity against the right-hander. And that's going to be a ground ball down to second base, X. And Frisch, Frisch is a range of one, error of 16, and he's going to get to that. Uh, 16 and 14 at second base. And roll of five. And that is going to be a double play. So four, six, three, double play. And again, my rust with the uh, super advanced, since I haven't played this for a while, is showing. But that ends the inning. A couple hits, one left, and we head to the bottom of the six. Still five, four, elites over the misfits. And in the bullpen for the elites now, we have both Ray Brown and Leon Day loosening up. Uh, Joe McGinnity, we're going to close the book on him after six innings. So McGinnity goes six innings, and he gives up a total of nine hits, five runs, all of them earned. Definitely was not his day. He did not record a single strikeout, and he ended up walking three batters. And gave up a home run and is the pitcher of record. And Lefty Gomez is going to replace him. And hopefully uh, pitch well over the final three innings. And Gomez... He is an E6. Alright, back to the action. As George Kell set to lead things off in the six here against Hilton Smith. And Kell, and that is going to be a triple over a double. And Kell drives that down in the corner, rattles around, and not fielded cleanly by Cool Papa Bell. And Kell is going to lumber literally into third base with a triple, diving in head first ahead of the throw. So tying run is on third, and in the Elite's bullpen, Leon Day starts to loosen up with a little bit more purpose. And again, uh, Smith has to face two batters, house rule, to get to the pen. As old aches and pains, Luke Appling, and that is going to be a ground ball down to short. And runners are going to hold on that as the infield. I did not bring the infield in, and luckily it did not matter. Uh, with one out and still only the sixth inning, I'm going to leave the infield back. We'll concede a tie and run if we have to. Smith to Frankie Frisch and Frisch. Uh, three and six against the right hander, and that's going to be a pop out to first base. So F3. And two outs now, and Smith on the verge of pitching out of this jam a leadoff triple and potentially stranding him there as Chris Speaker steps in. And Speaker, six and a two, and that is going to be a split chance home run, but again against the lefty. Oh, Speaker gives it a ride and just not the right part of the ballpark as that is caught at the fence by Cool Papa Bell. 
So, so many long fly balls have fallen just short in this one. A hit for the Misfits, but they strand the leadoff triple, and we head to the top of the seventh inning, still 5 4 elites in the lead. And Lefty Gomez, your new pitcher. And Gomez. Uh, steel adjustment now will be a minus three. As he is a little bit better than uh, McGinnity at holding runners on. Oscar Charleston up. And Gomez, a pitch against the left-hander. And it's going to be a pop out to first base, one down. Josh Gibson up, and against the right-hander, that'll be a ballpark single chance, and again, 1-19, to and Josh has his first hit of the day. And Gibson, he's going to stay put for Turkey Stearns. And our final fun fact about uh, Norman Thomas Stearns, a.k.a. Turkey Stearns, he was a five-time All-Star and the Negro Leagues used to hold a uh, East-West Classic, is what it was called. Um, basically an all-star uh, game between the Eastern and Western teams. So Turkey was a five-time participant in that game. Again, a uh, tribute to his skills as a ball player. As lefty-on-lefty -lefty matchup here, and two and a six. And Stearns, he is showing out, taking advantage of his uh, spotlight. That's going to be a home run over a triple. And that's going to be a three-bagger that drives in Gibson and increases a lead to 6-4. So very fitting for Stearns. We've had fun facts about him, and he has single, double, and tripled, scored twice, and driven in a run. Uh, let's hope he gets one more at bat and a chance to go for the cycle. And that would be something. So Deacon White now at the plate, and here comes a pitch, another lefty-lefty matchup. And that is going to be a fly ball to left field. And out in left field, Al Simmons has a range of one and an error rating of four. He's going to get to that. And that is going to be a sacrifice fly if there is no error. And error rating of four, a roll of nine. And he's going to make the play, but Stearns is going to trot home with his third run of the ball game, and it is now 7-4 elites over the Misfits. So, sack fly 7 for Deacon White. And bases are clear, two outs, Biz Mackey up to the plate. And here comes a pitch, and he'll be batting right-handed against the lefty, uh, lefty Gomez at this point. Five and a nine, and struck him out. So first strikeout of the game for the uh, Cooperstown Misfits staff. And two more runs on two hits and a sack fly. Nobody left, and we are heading to the seventh inning stretch. Your score, Ebony Elites, seven. Cooperstown Misfits, four. And I do not have any guests in-house for the uh, seventh inning stretch song tonight, so we will just, uh, again, go spoken word at the old ball game as Al Simmons leads things off against Hilton Smith. And Leon Day is ready to come in the game if needed. He is warm and waiting down in the pen. And Hilton Smith strikes out Simmons. So big strikeout to start off the seventh inning. That is his second of the game, or third of the game. Sorry, Hank Greenberg steps in now. And I'm a little bit wild on my dice throws as always. And Greenberg, he's going to fly out to center field, two down. So Hilton Smith had some rough moments early. He's really settled down nicely. Uh, Gave up three hits and two runs in the first, a couple of single runs since then. And Harry Heelman, and that is going to be a ground ball down to shortstop, and Willie Wells takes care of that, whips it over to Buck Leonard, and three up, three down in the seventh. 
We head to the top of the eighth, 7-4, elites over the Misfits, and in good position to take the rubber game of this opening five-game swing of a 25-game barnstorming tour for Satchel Page's all-star team. So Buck Leonard against the left-hander, and one and a four is going to draw a walk to lead off the eighth inning. So looking for some insurance here, he will stay put, Ray Dandridge up, and that is a potential, uh, that is going to be a potential passed ball. And that would be a two for Campanella, and no pass ball. So against the right-hander, and that's going to be a strikeout for Lefty Gomez. Big out there, one down, runner on first still as we head back to the top of the order. Cool Papa Bell. And Bell against the left-hander, three and a six. That's going to be a single runner's advance two. So over to third goes Buck Leonard. And Cool Papa Bell, he's got his third hit of the day. Fourth time he has been on base. So one down, Willie Wells, who has a two-run homer, steps up. And against the left-hander, and Wells, he's going to go deep again. A no-doubter, well over the green monster in the left field. And Wells knew that was gone the moment it left his bat. A three-run shot, and this game is now out of hand. That's going to make it 10-4. to four as well as five RBIs on the day. And it's going to be a, uh, a tough choice here between player of the game, Wells. Wells, who is two for five, but two home runs, five runs driven in. And our feature player, Turkey Stearns, is three quarters of the way to the cycle, three for four, three runs scored in a ribby. So we might have to actually go co-players of the game there. Base is empty, one down. And Lefty Gomez is just going to be left out there to suffer, which he deserves at this point. And three and a nine, Charlton's going to keep it going with a single. And Charleston, he is going to try and steal. Two to six or 11 to get the jump, 11. And with the adjustment, uh, he is going to be a 1 to 14. So here comes a throw from Campanella, and he is in there. So our first stolen base of the day. And that brings up Josh Gibson. And Gibson, the pitch from Gomez. And against the right hander, struck him out. That's a big one for lefty. Two down. And looking to get out of this without any further damage as Turkey Stearns and Stearns, if he gets cycled here, that will cement his player of the game vote for me. And not going to happen. Five and a ten, and he goes down swinging. So uh, Lefty Gomez strikes out the side in the eighth inning. It's what he did in between. Uh, two singles, a walk, and a three-run home run by Willie Wells, his second of the game. So we are heading to the bottom of the eighth inning, and it is 10 to 4, and this one is over. I shouldn't say over, it's pretty much over, all over, but the shouting, and Hilton Smith still on the mound, and his point of weakness is the eighth inning. So for me, uh, if he gives up any combination of three base runners at this point, or five total, three in this inning, uh, he would have to be pulled, but we're going to leave him in. As Johnny Mai steps up, and the lefty, and that is going to be a catcher X chart. So behind the plate, and Josh Gibson is a three and a two. Uh, so three, and WG, and a two, two, and a roll of 11. 
So nothing's going to happen there, and that is going to be a squib in front of the plate, and catcher is going to gun him down. So 2-3 on that put out, and one away. And Roy Campanella steps up. And Campy, that's going to be a ground ball down to second base. And down at second base, Dandridge is a 1 and a 13. He's going to get to that. And 13 and a 16. And Dandridge makes a nice play in the hole, whips it over first base, and two away. So Campy heads back to the dugout. That brings up George Kell, and hope is fading rapidly here for the Cooperstown Misfits in danger of losing the series three games to two. And that's going to be a fly ball to right field. Can of corn out there for Cool Papa Bell. Three up, three down again. And since a leadoff triple in the sixth, Hilton Smith has now set down nine in a row. So we're heading to the top of the ninth. Blowout, Ebony Elites 10, Cooperstown Misfits 4. And Lefty Gomez is going to try and close us out without any further damage. And that is going to be a split chance home run over a double. And Deacon White gets all of that, and that's down in the short porch, Pesky's porch in right field, and just inside the foul pole, a solo shot, and that makes it 11 to 4. And at this point, there actually is going to be some more activity in the pen as Chief Bender is going to start loosening up. Gomez was going to be left to finish the game, but at this point, he is getting hammered. Second home run, he's given up, and that brings up Biz Mackey. And six and a seven against the right-hander, and that's going to be a strikeout. So one down. So lefty, uh, when he's not striking out people, he's just getting battered all over the ballpark. Uh, five and an eight to the left-hander, and that is going to be a ground ball down to second base X. And Frisch again is a range of one. So he's going to get to that, and one, 16, and a four. And he will make the play, so two down. And that brings up the ninth hitter, Ray Dandridge. And Gomez trying to get out of this, and Dandridge, he is going to do one and a seven, is going to be a single right back up the middle. So no such luck for Lefty, and that brings up Cool Papa Bell, and if he does not get retired, that will be his last batter, as Bender is now warm and ready to go if needed. Just to staunch the bleeding here. And Cool Papa Bell... One and a ten against the right-hander, and again, he's going to get the ballpark single, and eleven. So that is going to be a single pass shortstop into center field. And speaker minus one, two outs, Dandridge. It'll be one to sixteen, he's going for third base, and he's in there comfortably. So runners at the corner, and I'm going to just let Lefty suffer. Who cares? Uh, five and an eight, and against Willie Wells, and that is going to be a ground ball down to second base X. And again, Frankie Frisk, range of one and a 16. And he is just going to get to that, 16 and a nine. And Frisch makes the play, and mercifully, the inning is over. Uh, three hits and another run come across for the Elites, so we head to the bottom of the ninth inning, and our score is Elites 11, Misfits 4. And Hilton Smith will be left to finish this out, and he's still uh, in no danger of being fatigued at this point. Luke Appling leads it off. And three and a seven against the right-hander. That's going to be a fly ball to right field, one away. 
So 10 straight set down by Hilton Smith now. And if he hadn't had such a rough beginning, he also may be in the conversation for player of the game. Not going to happen though. Uh, three to five, Frankie Frisch and Frisch against the right hander. That's going to be a triple over a single. And that will line her fall in front of the left fielder. So Frisch on board, and with this lopsided score, he's not going to try and steal. Tris Speaker comes up and a possible wild pitch. And Hilton Smith needs to be one. He's good. And Speaker, four and a six against the right hander, and that's going to be double over a single. So Speaker, a single, and going to third base is Frisch. So a little bit of life still left in this team. A lot of ground to make up, though, as Al Simmons steps up to the plate. And here comes a pitch from Hilton Smith. And five and a six against the right hander, and struck him out. So that is the second time he's fanned Simmons, and he was one base runner away from his point of weakness. And last chance is Hank Greenberg. Here comes a pitch. And four and an eight to the right-hander, and Smith ends the game with a strikeout. So three hard ones past Greenberg, and this one is in the books. So the Misfits get a couple of hits in the bottom of the ninth, but they cannot score. And our final here is Satchel Page's traveling all-star team, the Ebony Elites 11. And the Cooperstown Misfits made up of the best of the rest, Hall of Fame All-Stars 4. So on the day, the Elites, they had a total of 9 14, 15 hits, 11 runs, 1 error. And the Misfits had 4 runs, 10 hits, no errors. Uh, winning pitcher is Hilton Smith. Uh, he goes the distance. Gives up all 10 hits and all 4 runs, 3 of them were earned. And Smith walks... Uh, walks two and fans You will fan five and give up no home runs so player of the game Yeah, I have lefty disease I keep a very sloppy scorecard proudly um, player of the game uh, our Spotlight player Turkey Stearns, who we had some fun facts on in this one, he was three quarters of the way to a cycle, a uh, single, double, triple, three runs scored, and a RBI. But Willie Wells, uh, he had the big bat, he was two for six, but both of his hits cleared the wall and he drove in five runs. So Technically, uh, I think I've got to give it to Willie Wells. So we'll give Willie Wells player of the game and an honorable mention and a ticket to the snack bar for Turkey Stearns, who had a great day as well. Uh, several players, Cool Papa Bell, he was actually four for five at the top of the order, scored a couple of runs, uh, was only retired once, also drew a walk, so he could have been in consideration as well. Uh, but that is it. So. The first leg of the Satchel Page Traveling All-Star Barnstorming Show is over. Uh, 20 more games to go, and again, this is just a project we'll kind of slip in here and there uh, between racing, uh, Fergie Jenkins' 1969 payoff pitch replay, and any more Glory Days boxing updates. So, as always, thank you for watching, and until next time, keep rolling for the fences. Have a good night, all.